Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. And today, I want to give you kind of like a speed set of tips on how to make a really good sky replacement. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take this image of the Seattle skyline that really needed better clouds. And those clouds were there that night, just not where I wanted them to be. So I put them there and it's going to look a little something like this. So I'm going to teach you how to go from this to this in a matter of minutes. All right, so what I wanna show you today is how to do a sky replacement and maybe not really like how to step-by-step step follow this and then do this and then do that type of sky replacement, but really kind of make it easier on you just to, to make it easy on yourself on how to do a sky replacement. Because, you know, sometimes we look at a sky that needs to be replaced. This sky definitely, I think, needs to be replaced. And you know what? I was in Cary Park, beautiful skyline of Seattle that night. And guess what? The clouds weren't behind the skyline. If you actually look over here towards the right of, I guess, the all this pier stuff and maintenance construction cranes things, <laughs> if you look over here, that's where the sky was. It was a beautiful sky that night, just a nice little strip. And I was like, you know what? How cool would it be if that was behind this? And, well, we can do it in Photoshop. So with this tutorial, I don't want you to really feel too stressed about a sky replacement and take it hard on yourself. I'm going to show you some very quick, easy tips for doing sky replacements. And this comes from a new course I've created called Photoshop Foundations Sky Replacements that is on the F64 Elite website that's available for F64 Elite members or for download. If you click on the card above, you'll get access to that link that'll take you to the site or in the description below. So. Sky replacements. How would I replace this sky? Well, I definitely want this sky on this foreground. So what I would do is I would go to that sky and I've already got it kind of prepped up and ready for me. It didn't really do much on the raw level to get it to this point. I'd click on this layer, press and hold shift, bring it over to this canvas and drop it on here while clicking and holding shift that aligns everything from the center. And you might say, well, Blake, you don't really have a sky, a whole, just a sky here. You've got a sky with also, um, you know, some foreground elements there. Well, I want those foreground elements there because that's the horizon that shows me where I should naturally place this sky. So a couple things I can do here is just reduce this opacity down to about 50%. And that, that shows me where I can move this sky up to before I'm going to have my horizon here touch on that image that I want to put it on. So if I were to even drop this opacity a little bit more, you'd see that this skyline here has these trees. So I need to put it below those mountains back there or the area that I'm going to replace it. That's tip number one. When you're photographing your skies, make sure you put the horizon in there. It makes your life so much easier, okay? So the next thing, after you get it placed where you want that thing to be placed, that sky to be placed, and move this over a little bit, turn the preview of it off, click on that background layer, make a quick selection of this background. So I'm just going to go like this. Okay. Make a quick selection of that background, alt or option. When I have that quick selection tool selected to take away the area that it might have selected too much of, and I'm not going to get too pretty about this folks. Okay. So I really just want to make sure that I get enough of the sky in there, but if it takes, you know, too much of, uh, of the other elements in the image, I'm not too worried about it because I'm going to use this tool called select and mask. I know it's everyone's most feared tool in the world, but select and mask can do a really good job of cleaning this up. So when we pop into select and mask, the reason why people fail to use the select and mask feature very well is that up here is where you want to make sure you have the refine edge brush tool selected. The next thing, pop over here to radius, bring this up just a little bit and smart radius. That already starts to help out the contrast edges of where I need to select here. So now with the rather large brush, as long as I keep this plus sign in the white area, watch this. It's going to go ahead and make a really good selection for me. Even of those buildings that you see there that weren't very well selected, they don't have to be perfect. Okay. These selections don't have to be great. My friend Jim Wolninski has this great phrase that a mask doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to create the illusion. It doesn't have to be great. It just has to be good enough to pass uh, to the viewer. Okay. So then we'll take, when, with this, we have a, basically a contrast on this mask. And that contrast uh, that we see there that goes from black to white is going to affect how our sky replacement is going to work. So if I want to get rid of that contrast, if I click this button over here and move the contrast over, watch that. It's going to start taking away some of the, the elements in this. And you know what? This should actually be pretty darn good. Even though I've got some elements in here that probably shouldn't be in there, I'm going to go ahead and press OK anyway. I've got this set to selection. The key things here 
make sure that you've got this thing right here set to refine edge brush. And then on my preview, I have it set to a black and white preview because I think it's easier. But you know, select and mask, a lot of people have issues with it. Make sure you're using the refine edge brush. Make sure you've got that smart radius selected and then use the contrast to your benefit and then press OK. Again, the mask doesn't have to be perfect. So now that I've got an idea of this mask, I'm going to click the preview of this uh, sky that I want to replace. Turn that back on, click on the layer, and then build the mask. Perfect, right? Well, not really. This is where we get unnatural and nasty looking skies. And I see this a lot in sky replacements. The background does not match the foreground. Luckily for us, the background has a lot of nice blue light in there. So what else can we do? Well, click on it and change the blend mode to something like overlay, soft light, or hard light. And look at that. Holy cow. The reason why this works out so well, hard light. Hard light is going to be a really fast and really hard kind of effect. Hard light. Soft light is definitely going to be a little bit on the softer and overlay is going to be somewhere in between and probably have a little bit more of a natural approach. It's all about how the pixels are turned on and turned off with those layers. I'm going to choose hard light, but I'm going to drop this opacity down a little bit. Okay. And now we have this sky on that foreground and it looks awesome, but okay. We made our mask and we're afraid because we made a perfect mask. Oh man, well, I made this mask is so great, but it doesn't look natural yet. Well, it's okay. You can still come over here to something like the uh, graduated filter and have that graduated filter go from black transitioning into transparent. And then while I'm clicking on this mask, I can just press and hold shift as I click and drag up and where I drag up, this is basically making a feather feathering that edge of how that mask is going to align. So we get a nice smooth transition back there. I might need to go up a little bit higher. Okay. And look at this. It's not the perfect mask, but guess what? Just like Jim says, it passes the illusion and it looks really darn good. I'll take it. So essentially what I showed here was like some speed tips on how to do a sky replacement. You know, in here, I could have essentially done a, a video on just using select and mask. I could have done a video on just using uh, the blend mode, but I, what I really want to show share with you is that you don't have to be so hard on yourself when you're doing these sky replacements and you can make a really nice natural looking sky replacement in less than seven minutes. Now I'm teaching you and coaching you through this, but imagine how fast you can get at sky replacements. If you understand each one of these elements for many of you who know these tools very well, then you can probably look at this and say, okay, Thanks, Blake. That's helpful for others who might need a breakdown of how to use the select and mask a little bit more thoroughly or how to use blend modes a little bit more thoroughly. That's where the Photoshop Foundation's Sky Replacements course comes in. I've divided the whole course into individual lessons and even built a bunch of drop ins for you that are already accessible for you. So if you don't have skies like this, you can use my skies royalty free. And I've also made uh, brushes where you can just click a brush and you got a, a cloud in the sky. It's really kind of cool. So if you're interested in that course, go ahead and click on the card above or in the description below. Again, my name is Blake Grudis. If you like this tutorial, please share it to a friend who did a horrible sky replacement and shared it with you. I think they will really appreciate it. It's probably just comes down to that blend mode. That blend mode can change the whole thing. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and the course that I've created as much as I did. All right. Thanks again. Take care.